and good morning. Welcome to the Institute of Christian and Masonic Studies. I am the good Reverend Leroy Stewart Singh. Uh, today, we're going to speak on Jesus Christ. I can't stress this enough. My messages are to the church and to the Masonic law. Today, we will focus on Jesus Christ, the love of Jesus Christ. In the book of uh, Matthew, Sermon on the Mount, chapter 7, verse 21, 22, and 23, which my personal ministry incidentally is founded on, Jesus makes this statement. In that day, many will say to me, Lord, Lord, in your name, have we not prophesied? In your name, have we not cast out demons? In your name, done any wonderful thing, Jesus is going to reply, get away from me. I never knew you, workers of iniquity. Now, think about that. He's talking to the church folk. So if you ain't church folk, you might as well turn this off. I'm going to make the church folk mad enough. And if you ain't church folk, ain't no sense you getting mad because you don't believe one way or the Jesus is talking about people who say they have received him as their Lord and Savior. Jesus is talking about people who say they have confessed him with their mouth, believed in their heart, and so received him as the Lord and Savior of their life. Think about that Kim. He said, in that day, when they run to him, in your name, Lord, have we not. In your name, Lord, have we not. Well, ain't no prostitute in the world out there this Sunday morning saying, in Jesus' name. Ain't no doper in no dope alley saying this morning in Jesus' name. Ain't no murderer sitting up nowhere this morning saying in Jesus' name. Ain't nobody on this wonderful summer Sunday sitting up anywhere saying in Jesus' name but you damn church punk. All right, so now let's talk about you, church punk. I'm talking about the one Jesus is talking about, the one that he's going to tell you in the day of judgment before the great throne of God. He's going to say, get away from me. I never, you, I never even knew you, you workers of iniquity. Now, don't get mad at me now. This is St. Matthew's chapter 7, verse 21, 22, and 23, the celebrated sermon on the mount. Well, I think the first question ought to be, if you, church folk, are doing prophecy in Jesus' name. That's a good thing, eh? If you, church folk, are casting out demons in Jesus' name, that's a good thing, ain't it? If you, church folk, are doing all these wonderful things in the name of Jesus, why did Jesus call y'all in workers of iniquity? Why is Jesus himself going to tell you, church folk, get away from me. I'm going to tell you why. Because you must be born again. As I look around me today, uh, yeah, my brothers and sisters who think they in Christ Jesus and don't know they're going to bust the bottom out of hell. So many of you listen to me this morning, either going to church or you've been already, and I guarantee you, you might as well stay on at home and be on and did whatever it is you want to do, just like the, the folks that ain't playing like they know Jesus, and go on with your life. Live, die, and whatever. Because, see, you're a hypocrite. Let's talk about what it means to know Jesus. To know Jesus, we got to go to the Garden of Gethsemane. Y'all know the one, I think it was in all of uh, the Gospels, except maybe John. John didn't get into it too deep. But the mother boy, Matthew, Mark, Luke, they gave this story. After Jesus had instituted the Last Supper at that table, knowing that in the next few hours he was going to be beat, spit upon, whipped, drugged, you know, chained, and left alone. He knew that was going to happen. Then when he looked over there, and Peter, Peter, another one of them church folk that Peter went. He told him, said, well, they're going to kill me tonight, in the morning. 
and all the shepherds are going to scatter. Peter jumps up. Not me, Lord. I don't, if I have to die with you, I'll never leave. Now, y'all know that. Y'all know this. What did Jesus tell Peter? Peter, before the chicken crow, you're going to deny me three times so that you don't go feeling too bad about what I'm going to tell John the Baptist, that's a nerd, thought he knew Jesus. Well, he's out there baptizing folk, telling folk, the one that's coming behind me is the man, talking about Jesus. Well, when Satan pulled his card through Herod, locked him up in that little jail cell, made him eat pork, yeah, you heard me right from now on, but John didn't eat nothing but what? Wild honey and locusts. He was a, a naturalist, certainly a vegetarian. But when uh, Herod locked his behind up in that jail cell, he ate what they did. Oh, he tried to hold out. But that hunger, that body, had to have some food. And do you think that Herod sent somebody out to find some wild honey and locusts to John the Baptist? No. His wife wasn't going to stand for that. So he ate what they gave. That's why you folk don't eat pork. That ain't sick and don't eat pork. All right. John the Baptist, when Satan got through putting the screws to him, it's the same John the Baptist who testified, there go Jesus, the Lamb of God. That's the same one. When Satan got through with him, he sent three of his boys from jail. He gave the instructions, go find Jesus. Then ask him, is he the one? What I'm trying to tell you is this. We need to really know whether or not we're the one. We need to know that we are the adopted sons and daughters of God through Jesus Christ. We need to know, like the first century Christians, who was martyred by the Romans in the Roman Empire. We need to be like them Christians that they put in the lion's den. We need to be like them Christians that they boil in high oil. We need to be like them Christians that they just bust their heads open. We need to be like them Christians that they crucified and put on crosses all outside Rome for people to laugh at. We need to be like them Christians where on the Saturday afternoon they herd us into the Roman Colosseum and kill us in front of people. We was the number one spectator folks. Yeah, we was bigger than baseball. We was bigger than football. Killing Christians. And you know what? All they had to do was deny Jesus. And Rome said they let him go free. Well, you know how many people died? Thousands, thousands of them. Because they would not deny Jesus. Do you deny him this morning? Well, let's see. Well, you know about it. Let me tell you about Jesus. Come with me to the Garden of Eden this morning. We're going to tell you about the love of Jesus Christ. And they tell you that, it's going to tell you how to get your prayers answered. It's going to tell you how God is going to bless you. All right. When Jesus was in the Garden of Gethsemane, he took three of his disciples, the usual, Peter, John, and James. He said, come with me, yonder, and wait with me while I pray. I'll get you just left that upper room, he had just finished giving them the Lord's Supper that he won't die in his church. He finna go die. But a curious thing happened in that garden of Eden, the garden of Gethsemane. Did you know Jesus was going in that garden of Gethsemane to ask God to not make him do this? What? Did you know Jesus, like any man or any woman, did not want to die? Did you know this moment that Jesus wanted to be? The reason Jesus prayed, now my Bible and my mama, God rest her soul, told me a long time ago he had to pray three times before he made up his mind to die for you and for mine. He had to pray it three times, y'all. He didn't pray once. He didn't pray twice. He prayed three times. Now what prayer did he pray? You can find in St. Mark, 
St. Luke for sure. St. Matthew, they got it. They told the boy, John, James, and Peter, said, y'all wait right here, and I'm going to go just a little bit over yonder, and I'm going to pray. He didn't tell them what he was going to pray for. He was going to God, his Father. You know the prayer, Jesus said, Abba, A-B-B-A, Father, that's just like saying Pop or Dad. Abba, Father, all things, are possible with you. You can do anything. If it be possible, take this cup from me. Now let's think about that a minute. Hold on. I know y'all got your Bible now. Oh Lord, I know that. Hallelujah. Stop that shit right now. Stop it. I'm going to tell you like he told Thomas. Cut it out. You don't get more bleed up than the man in the moon. You don't know the price he paid for it. You don't understand that Jesus was praying asking God don't let them kill me for your ass. Ready for the time. Jesus did not want to die. Now it gets more complex than that. Long time ago, thousands of years before Jesus was born, there's a fellow by the name of Moses. Come on, y'all know the story. God took him up on top of Mount Sinai and gave him ten little rules. Count them. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten rules called the Ten Commandments. Oh, Lord. Yes, sir. You got that, ain't you? God said to Moses, told him to tell the world. Anybody, man or woman, boy or girl, that can keep these ten simple rules, commandments, that I give you now. I will call that person righteous and I will give them eternal life. Y'all know that? That's what Psalm 133 is about. But there the Lord commanded the blessing even life forevermore. Eternal salvation, righteousness was given on the top of Mount Sinai thousand years before Jesus was born. He gave it to Moses to put it in stone, to bring it down from the mountain and give it to you and future generations. You're with me now. We're going to get there. God said anybody that keeps these ten simple rules and regulations, he would call them righteous. He would acknowledge their obedience to keep them, and he would give them eternal life. Here's where Jesus gets complicated. Church folk. Out of everything God created, out of everybody God created, including the angels, nobody, no creature had been able to keep the Ten Commandments. Did you know that? Lucifer couldn't keep Hell, Abraham didn't even try. Because they hadn't been written yet. The law, or Ten Commandments, wasn't given to 432 years after Abraham lived and died. But oh, that damn King David had them. And what did he do? He broke every damn one of them. Every single one of them. Now Jesus' brother, St. James, told us in the book of James, if you break one of the ten, you don't break all of the team. So in other words, God didn't grade and don't grade and never will grade on the curve. You're going to either keep all ten or you ain't going to keep none at all. But now if you can do it, you don't need Jesus. Let me say that again. I don't think you heard but what I said. If you keep these ten commandments, you can tell Jesus to take a break. God will call you righteous. God will suit your obedience. And God will give you eternal life. If you keep the Ten Commandments. Now here where it gets real good. No creature, no man, no woman, nothing, no angel, nobody has kept the Ten Commandments but Jesus Christ. That's the first thing you know, church folk. Why y'all run around talking about you know Jesus? Did you know that? 
That's why in the Sermon on the Mount, oh, shucky ducky. That's why in the Sermon on the Mount, in verse 5, in chapter 5, Jesus said, Think not that I have come to destroy the law or the prophets. I have not come to destroy the law, but to fulfill the law. Now you heard. So Jesus ain't telling you like some of these jackass preachers y'all got. You ain't got to keep the Ten Commandments. You damn well better keep them unless you're under grace. Paul, would somebody read Romans chapter, would somebody read the book of Romans, please, and understand that you either living under grace through Jesus Christ or your behind is still under the law, the Ten Commandments. Jesus kept all ten of them. Now I don't have time on this shoot this morning to go.